obsession. Olivia sat at the table with her laptop in the living room, where large ornaments collected from a bygone era sat on dressers and along units and the floor gathering dust. A crystal clock chimed the hour in the center of a large marble mantelpiece that held photographs of a familiar dark-haired captain from various decades. All paintings hang on the wall that a woman had possibly chosen for the room. Olivia had been staring at the same data for the past half hour about immortality and morphic fields. The torch with software filtered around the edges of the information upon the screen. She was a young woman, had grown and matured, and took on a lot of her grandmother's features and attitudes, especially where her grandfather was concerned. Her parents were long since gone, nobody to carry on the Colasanto name, and she had never married, never found someone without an interest in her family's wealth, never found someone she could trust, someone who would love her, for her and not for the money. She finally turned to face her grandfather, a tired old man, gray-haired, but still with a fire in his belly, and still as lean as he was all those years ago reading a newspaper, open at the financial pages. He sensed her glancing over and looked up through his five vocals. All right, out with it. He lowered the newspaper, folding it at the crease, and set it beside him. You have been itching for an argument since breakfast. He leaned back against the imported antique Italian sofa facing the large bay windows, looking out across the courtyard, and folded his arms across his chest. His granddaughter faced him. Did you ever love, grandmother? Angelo felt the question like a shot to the heart. It was something his wife often asked him when she was alive. Did you ever love me, Angela? He, he nailed deeply uncrossed his arms and sat up in the seat. Of course I loved your mother. She was a beautiful woman. Why do you ask? He reached over for the cigarettes on the table in front of him. He sat the empty cup of coffee and shook out a cigarette. He had been meaning to quit. You rarely talk about her. When I was growing up, you only ever talked about Jack or the stories of Lil Illy. Why is he so important to you? She felt a rage burn inside of her young heart. She'd seen her grandmother slip farther and farther into the shadows, while her grandfather became more and more obsessed with your hardness. He was just a man that you shared a dirty secret with. Angelo rose from the seat, tossing the cigarettes down, including the one still held in his mouth unlit. Jack Harkness is more than that, he wrote. I made a promise, Olivia, to myself that I would make amends for the terrible things that happened back in Little Italy, and I will. Believe me. He looked away, ashamed that he had erupted over Jack again, defending him over his family. He walked over, stroking his hand against her shoulder length hair. My child, I loved your grandmother. She bore me a son, who in turn found a beautiful woman who created an intelligent, beautiful granddaughter. There has never been a moment when I have regretted any of it. I love all of my family so very much. He leaned down and kissed the top of her head, lingering as he closed his eyes. He straightened up shortly after and took a seat beside her at the table. He stared out at the window at the sun-baked ground The sounds so hot that even prayer ducks would be sheltering deep below the surface. When Jack left after the trouble in Little Italy, I was lost for a while. I knew I would never find another man like him, not so much because he was immortal, but because of the kindness he showed me towards me. It was uh, at the end, just before we were 
to head out to do a job for Maranzano, Jack wanted me to leave. He did not wish for me to join him. His investigations were always dangerous and often fatal. But I told him that I wanted to go with him. He told me about a friend of his, the doctor, a man whom he had traveled with, a man who had companions. He said it was a nice life and so I, I could go with him. Angelo toyed with a coaster as he talked, turned it about in his hand, tracing his index finger along the corked edges. Olivia listened as her grandfather remembered about Jack, about him being shot in the head, about his time spent in Sing Sing prison and the experiences that came from that. How when he came out, so Jack standing waiting for him, but how her grandfather had been convinced that Jack was the devil, and to rid the devil he had killed him, only to see him return alive. And the butcher's shop repeatedly murdered and resurrected. He had heard a story so many times she could practically recite them. Angelo sighed and lowered a costume. One of the things Jack insisted I did was to earn as much as I could and save it. Bad times were ahead, he told me. It would get better and then it would get all bad again. I never understood why at, at the time, but after Jack left I took work and I saved every penny I could. In August 1929 we were in a recession by October, and that year the stock market collapsed. After that was Black Tuesday. It was the start of the Great Depression. Farmers were defaulting on their loans because of bad summers. There was little food to sustain a hungry nation. There was a famine, a mass unemployment. Everything Jed had prophesied had come true. Over the next few years, I continued to work and save. And as you can see all around you, Olivia, although we may have gone without a few luxuries at the time, we are indeed living like kings now. How do we not? He smiled. Riley, her, he had spoiled her rotten as a child, his only granddaughter from his only son. Your grandmother knew about Jack. I could have a dirty secret from everyone else, but I could hide nothing from her. I used to call his name out in my sleep, always from the nightmares of little Italy. You see, I always believed when Jack came back to me that he was the devil in disguise, sent by my God to punish me for what I was. It used to anger Jack that I sought forgiveness every night for my sins. I can't see in your eyes disapproval for what I was back then, what I am still, in some ways. Although I loved your grandmother, she always knew that there were three people in our marriage. I could never forget him, Olivia. All of this, all that you see, has been built and provided for you and your father and grandmother because of Jack. Do you think any of this would have been possible without him? He waved his arms across the room, the ornate and expensive objects bought, some collected, others found beneath a destroyed hopping cart. His eyes glanced upon a photograph of Jack, black and white shot in the silver frame upon the mantelpiece. He allowed himself to smile at it in his mind. Jack smiled back with the boyish grin that had melted Angelo time and time again as he recalled it. Olivia turned to face the computer screen. Her fingers traced lightly over the keys. But why marry at all if you prefer Jack? No wonder my father hated this house. It's a living shrine. She blinked tears from her eyes, casually wiping them away and control her angered emotions. Angelo removed his glasses, setting them down upon the table and rubbed his face with the flats of his hands before he rose from his seat.
and walked across the thick rug to the window overlooking the courtyard. The housing grounds, the fields and area beyond all belonged to him. He had lived a good life, in a way secluded life, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. He had entered the country legally with forged papers. At any time he could have been stopped and deported by Jack's forged visa had given him the right to be an American citizen. He had lived hand to mouth on small earnings, saving all that he could, lived in cheap accommodation. He didn't return to the butcher's shop, he held too many memories with the last one blotted and stained on the sheets. He worked, running errands, taking work from whoever was asking. He ran deliveries for stationers, delivered newspapers, shoe shine. Everyone needed a shoe shine ball. He worked and he saved. He was still young enough, he was quick on his feet, good with his fists. If he needed money, he knew where to look. He wasn't ashamed that a little pickpocketing paid a good meal to see him through. That he was able to afford a trip across town that brought him the attention of Lucia. She was an Italian immigrant that moved with her family from the shores of Italy. She had arrived by boat the same as Angela, but had only been a baby when she had arrived. She served the workers and travelers their morning's coffees with a smile and a conversation. She was a little younger than he, but age was never an issue with her. She was putting out the trash when she saw him sheltering from the rain in the alleys. The building across from the cafe had a metal fire escape and someone had discarded a broken table onto the ledge. She smiled at him. He smiled back. Your grandmother used to work at Luciano's, a small cafe I used to pass on my way home. I was renting a small bed sit then. It was a few blocks from the butcher's shop. It was not as good as the old place. It had a few unwanted house guests. He pulled a face and Olivia could only imagine it wasn't of the two electric variety. Cockroaches? Angelo nodded. Family of them. Dating back to the granddaddy of them all. The building had been earmarked for demolition, but it was already two years overdue. He smiled. It did for a while, until I could afford better accommodation. I moved closer to her family for a while, a better affordable apartment for less unwanted house guests. I worked in the cafe. We shared bed and board. We lived in and out of each other's pockets. He laughed, lightly remembering a moment. Marrying your grandmother was... I never thought a man like me could be so happy again. For a while, I stopped thinking of Jack, but the nightmares were always there as a nagging reminder that for all that I was a part of, for such a short time I had to find him. I had to warn him that the families would never stop until they found him again. But you never spoke to him when you did find him. Why not? Why not tell him and then leave and let him watch his own back? All you did for all those years was pushing my grandmother away till she had nothing. You were never home. And even when you were, you were in your study researching immortality. Was it brought you? She glared at him at the window. The old man, living beyond his years, staring out at the desolate world so isolated at the post was mainly emailed or delivered by Cooter. A chance to live forever. He turned his head slowly to look at her stunning features. Every aspect of her, the livery, nothing held a chance. She was almost a copy of her grandmother. He smiled softly at her. Olivia, every human under the sun wishes for immortality extra time to sort out their affairs. The families were planning on using the blood of Jack Harkness for something. The information we have collected mentioned vats of his blood stored for something big. In the butcher's shop, they called him the Blessing. And since that day, 
that is the only word I ever hear. The blessing. What is it if it's not immortality? You can't protect him forever. One day you will be too old and weak to carry out any form or plan to protect that man. She spoke vehemently about Jack. He looked at her. He couldn't deny that the temptation had been there and was still there. <sighs> he sighed. I have work to do. He walked carefully towards the door, turned on his heels and glanced back at her, with his hand against the door frame, before she drew her own conclusions. I never once cheated on your grandmother. But if Jack had come back asking you to rekindle rec your past relationship, would you have gone? He thought for a few moments, then the word he said. I'll be in the study if you need me. I'll leave you watch her grandfather go before turning back to the monitor, shutting down the laptop and walking to the window where her tears fell as she stared out towards the garage car park and the security man guarded her and her grandfather against the world. <laughs>